It's been a few months since the big reveal of all the issues the Smash Bros. community was facing, including the allegations against Zero and his last statement before going to therapy. And now with Nara's statement shining a light onto the issue again, I had to think back to all the allegations and Zero's case came back to my mind. Now I definitely think that when a horrendous act is committed, the perpetrator should face punishment, while the victim should be met with support. And while I do think it was a good wake-up call for Zero and an opportunity to become a better human being, I do not believe that the things he committed are deserving of a permanent loss of his platform or career. Yes, punishment was needed, not only because of the things he's done, but also because of how he handled them. As Levin nicely stated in his post from the 3rd of July, while Zero's actions were nowhere as horrendous as those of other people, it's still important for him to admit to them, learn from them, and become better in the future. While I don't intend to downplay anyone's negative experience or pain, what Zero did was nothing that I find unusual in a teenager's online world from my experience. He exposed his flatmates to explicit content when she was 15, and he was 18 I believe, and around the same time he chatted with a 14 year old and a 16 year old, being flirty with them at first, but then eventually asking them to masturbate for him while they were chatting online. While Zero claims that he didn't know at that time that these two chat partners were underage, the women in question doubt that he didn't know. From Jesus' perspective, who is the woman that mainly compiled all of the allegations and published them while also being Zero's former flatmate, Zero is the kind of man that would be willing to have sexual chats with people even if they are minors. However, from Jesus' perspective, he was also grooming dimensional women at that time, while I think there is a big big difference between grooming and desperate attempts at sexting. And that's where a lot of people might disagree with me, especially the people involved. But the screenshots of the conversations seemed like interactions between two teenagers, both of them into anime culture. How they described things, finding them overly cute, using very specific smileys and so on. That's the kind of interaction I experienced a lot with people online that were into anime. And in that interaction, one of them being an admiring fan, the other one being an inexperienced horny male. And while I totally agree that horniness like that can be obnoxious as hell, it by no means equals malicious intent such as grooming, raping, blackmailing or emotional abuse. At no point did Zero threaten with any consequence or blackmail anyone in order to get what he wanted. He absolutely was creepy and tried desperately to steer the conversation into something sexual. But that's what I mean by saying it's not unusual in a teenager's online world. I think all of us have been on either side, being unreasonable but also getting creepy messages from stranger or acquaintances. Doesn't mean it shouldn't be called out or that it's acceptable, but in my eyes it's not an act deserving of losing your career or platform in the long run. I think it's good that he came clean and decided to start therapy, especially since he first denied everything and tried to downplay what was happening, which shows that he was aware that what he did was creepy, led by horniness and is not a way to approach people in any way. But you know, ironically enough, a person that helped Jizu in her decisions is one of the best examples of growth and improvement. Levin had a terrible reputation in his early days, and rightfully so, but he was willing to listen, to take a step back, figure himself out and learn from his mistakes. Now he's one of my favorite Smash players and acted somewhat as a moral compass in this situation. And I hope Zero manages to do the same thing. I believe that it was a good reality check for him to realize a couple of things. Firstly, that even though to him something might be minor or simply a joke, to others it might be too intimate or overwhelming. I still don't think that that can be called abuse, but it increases your awareness and allows you to be better in the future. And secondly, I hope the situation helps him mature so he can take responsibility for his shortcomings but also call out shortcomings of others if they happen around him. And with that I hope we allow people to become better and don't brand them for life for actions of that extent. Thanks for watching, cheers.